everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. I am bringing in a skein of Dry Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And here in my dye pot, I have water with vinegar, I think. I don't know or remember how much vinegar is in here. This is a leftover dye bath that I used from another project. And we are gonna use it, again, to use some leftover blue and yellow jacquard acid dyes that I have left over from a color mixing project. And I should have a reasonable amount of color because I have both uh, some of the colors that are like left over from rinsing out syringes and things like that. But then I also have some of the 1% dye stocks that I mixed up left as well. So I think that what I would like to do now that I have the yarn arranged in here is change the camera angle. So now hopefully you can see a bit more of the pot and I am gonna come over with these leftover dyes. Okay, and everything again is cool right now and I'm gonna pour things on and we're gonna try not to mix it up. So the blue is Jacquard Bright, Brilliant Blue maybe? And then Bright Yellow I think are the color names. Here is some of the yellow color, but this is like our first layer, and you can see like over there, some, the, not all the color has struck yet. Things are going to move. We will likely have various shades of green here, but we actually have equal amounts. This is the remaining 1% stock of our blue and our yellow, and so I'm going to fill these jars up with water, and then we're going to pour it onto the yarn. All right, I'm gonna come in with the yellow first. What having more water volume is going to allow us to do is it's gonna allow the dye to move more and penetrate more beneath the surface than what it might do otherwise. And I've poured this pretty much all over so far, pretty much all over, but even just pouring that blue in there, uh, yeah, you can see these tendrils of it starting to move out uh, and move onto the yarn. So it's not going to just stay put uh, just where I have it, but it'll move and layer and, oh man, where do I want to add this maybe back to that spot? Now I am going to rinse out these jars. So here's our yellow, and the amount of color that I'm adding isn't necessarily gonna do much, but this is moving the yarn. And as I move this in the yarn, that's helping the dye move around. And so my thought is that we will end up with a beautiful green that has various shifts and hues, but I'm expecting that we should have some decent color penetration down below as well. And so now I'm going to turn on the heat and we're going to let this heat up. But this kind of immersion kettle dyeing with multiple colors is something that I am more likely to do for a leave no dye behind, but it's something that I want to explore and play with more because even doing this all at once and not letting a color set, I could come in now and stir things up. And even now, maybe that would help some things be more even. Like I can see some of that blue dye just sort of hovering there. But as we heat things up, that's gonna let it move some. And ah, I'm being, I'm, I'm surprised with my patience <laughs> right now. I actually, on the other side of the stove, have a similar kind of effect going on right now. But um, yeah, I, I'm just really, really excited. And I thought that uh, this one, rather than putting it on that color mixing video, it deserved to have its own moment, its own video. So anyway, uh, I'll check in in about 15 minutes. But ooh, ooh, wait, see this cloud of blue moving across? Isn't that so cool? There are these like blue tendrils. So actually, maybe I'll, uh, 
No, I'm not gonna film a little time lapse. We'll just see how it looks in about 10 to 15 minutes. Ooh, this looks awesome. Okay, I think at this point, oh, can I move it? Oh, I can move it at this point because it's my yarn. I can do what I want. Most of the color, I think, is probably in the yarn. Oh, this is so, so pretty. I am so excited to take this out. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave the heat on, I think, for another 15 minutes. Then I will turn it off and let things cool completely here in the pot. Let's wash this leftover green and blue immersion colorway. There's no color left in the pot, which is always good. And, oh, this is so pretty. It is a very green yarn. I would say proportion-wise, we've probably got close to a one-to-one -one ratio of the yellow and blue. And while it's very green, you can see just how those colors spread. Ooh, I love it. I absolutely love it. This is, this is a technique that I feel like I can replicate on purpose. I just have to think about how it makes the most sense to do it. And I think that keeping the water volume high is really, really good. But now I'm gonna add just a little bit of some clear dish soap. I'm not anticipating to see any bleeding here. Oh, actually, maybe we have a hair. Although I can't tell if it's a reflection. Um, barely any if there is. So, uh, let's see. Let's see. I mean, I think there's like a tiny, maybe a tiny hair or something. But really, and as far as bleeding can go, that's like basically nothing. So I'm gonna rinse this a few more times. Then I'm gonna put the yarn in my spin dryer and hang it up to dry and we'll come back and take a closer look at this gorgeous colorway. This layered green color is beautiful. It is stunning and it's really fun when there's enough water volume so that the colors can spread and combine, giving us this green tonal feeling yarn that has all these different hues in it. It is just so rich and has so much depth. And then I know I would love to work with this myself. If we had more yarn in the pot so things were a bit more crowded, even with more volume of water, having a lot more yarn there means that the dye wouldn't necessarily spread as much as it did. And so we would likely see more yellow and green, but oh, I could just watch dye diffuse through a pot for a really, really long time. I think that it is so much fun. Lately, I've really been enjoying playing with softer, still somewhat variegated, but more tonal feeling with different colors. I am really enjoying these soft transitions and trying to find more ways to do it with intent. One of the big perks, I think, of doing a leave no die behind video like this for me is that I can start to see, okay, what conditions give and what dye molecules give me that spread I like to see. Because some colors strike really, really fast, even with little to no acid, and others spread, even with a high amount of acid. So it's not just the dye type, like acid dyes or food coloring, and the fiber content, sometimes the actual color molecule that you're using in your dye can make a difference on how fast or slow things strike to the yarn. And so playing with colors without having like a concrete plan or just sort of wanting to see what happens, it's so fun and it really inspires me to then go and try some of these things again with more intent. So I really hope that you enjoy this and other leave no die behind, leftover die type videos. I absolutely love making them and there are absolutely more coming up. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please make sure you are subscribed 
turn on notifications, and like this video. This is the biggest way that you can help support the content here on the Commits Tutorials YouTube channel. But if you want other ways to support this content, I do have an Etsy shop, Commits Creations, and a Patreon. You can find links to both of those down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.